X-rays are often used to deduce the de crystalline structure of particular solids. In a particular, typical X-ray diffraction spectrum, one is bouncing X-rays off of a substance, a crystal, at a certain angle theta. And then, of course, the detector has to be located an angle theta off that same crystalline structure, so it's an angle 2 theta relative to the original beam. One then measures the intensity of scattered X-rays as a function of 2 theta and sees peaks, and these peaks occur whenever the Bragg formula is met, the Bragg condition for constructive interference. And one notices a number of peaks because there are a number of crystal planes. Even for a simple cubic structure like this, one can define a plane that's either the horizontal plane consisting of the top four atoms, or a vertical plane consisting of one of the back four atoms, or a number of uh, diagonal planes as sh is shown in this diagram here in the lower right. These crystal planes go by different designations, uh, and these numbers here are referred to as the Miller indices. The Miller indices to tell you how much tilt there is in the x, the y, and the z direction. That's what the three different digits are. So the 101 plane is a, is a crystal lattice that, or a lattice plane that goes across the diagonal of a cube, uh, cutting across the xz direction. The 110 plane is something that cuts across the diagonal of a cube in the, in the uh, xy direction. The 011 plane is something that cuts across the diagonal of a cube in the yz direction, and so on. One has to def understand the Miller indices and then look at uh, these different patterns here, and these can all be different orders or different integer n of the Bragg condition and can be off of different planes. If you look carefully, you'll see uh, often in, a, in an X-ray diffraction pattern multiple occurrences of an interference maximum from the same plane, in other words, the same distance d between uh, these planes. Each of these planes has a different d effectively associated with it. There's sometimes a complication because you're scattering off of a pure crystal and you get the nice appearance of dots as uh, has shown, been shown before. Sometimes, however, you're scattering off of a, a powder. The powder is a lot like a, a solid crystal except it's, it consists of a lot of little crystalline grains. And all those grains are now oriented ran more or less randomly inside of a powder sample. So that tends to smear out the crystalline pattern shown on the left in the azimuthal direction around the, the periphery here. So you can still get information from the, the diameters of these rings, but a little less information than you would get from the scattering off of a pure crystal. There are entire national facilities dedicated to X-ray scattering studies, and in fact these are called synchrotron light sources because they are using uh, beams of high energy electrons to emit a form of X-ray called synchrotron radiation, but it's just a very high energy short wavelength uh, X-ray. And these X-rays occur um, more or less constantly as an electron orbits around a particle accelerator. And so you see these beam lines being constructed to see X-ray beams at various locations, and experimenters can go to use these national facilities all throughout the year because they're running constantly. And so you can place your sample in this X-ray beam and study the diffraction pattern of a scattered X-rays off of your particular crystalline solid. Studies like this have been used for everything from studying uh, new materials for engineering to studying proteins in biology to studying DNA to studying actually the, the structure, the chemical structure of anthrax and trying to break, uh, break down our understanding of that and how to attack anthrax when that became a big scare a number of years ago. Tens of thousands of users go to these national facilities uh, at national laboratories like Brookhaven National Lab, Argonne National Lab, Lawrence Berkeley Lab, Los Alamos National Lab, Cornell, Louisiana State has one, uh, Duke University has one. There are some across the world as well in Daresbury, England, Ankara, Turkey, Turkey uh, Zurich, Switzerland, Australia, France, you name it. A lot of facilities are constructed like this because of their importance in biology and chemistry and in material science.